Get 29% off Basic, Premium, and Premium Plus with the Power Up Sale. Unlock our entire language learning system right now. Hi, welcome to Introduction to Hebrew. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Edith. In this series, you'll learn everything you need to know to get started learning Hebrew. That's right, and we're here to help guide you through your journey. In this lesson, you'll learn the reasons why you should start learning Hebrew and how to get started. Let's begin with the most obvious question. Why learn a new language? There are countless reasons, but perhaps the biggest one of all is that it could actually change your life. Learning a new language unlocks new pathways that are off-limits to you now. There are certain things that you simply cannot do without having the technical or cultural skills that come from learning a new language. Like working or living in another country. Knowing another language provides you with greater job opportunities. You have the freedom to move to another country halfway around the world and earn a living, or even better yet, build a career from it, instead of just being stuck in one place. Language allows you to visit or live in places that you may never have even considered going. Knowing another language simply gives you more options to choose from. And learning a new language can help you to be more open-minded and see the world from a new perspective. Language and culture go hand in hand. The world is a big place, and by broadening your understanding of other cultures, it allows you to be more empathetic and understanding of the many different ways that people live their lives. With language, you're able to see and experience more, which helps you grow as a person. Learning a new language also improves your memory. Several studies have consistently shown that those who study another language have improved memory as opposed to those who didn't. Learning another language also keeps your brain healthy by significantly delaying the onset of Alzheimer's and dementia. This difference can be as much as four to five more years of quality life. And those are just some of the reasons you should learn another language. The list just goes on and on. Now you know the benefits of studying another language, but why should you learn Hebrew in particular? Well, do you know the Bible? That was written in Hebrew. One of the best reasons for learning Hebrew is to gain access to ancient texts in their original language. The Old Testament of the Bible was written in Biblical Hebrew. By learning modern Hebrew, you can begin to understand what the original writers intended in these complex texts. These ancient words take on new meaning when you know the word in Hebrew. Speaking of history, modern Hebrew made history when it became a spoken language after 2,000 years of only being used for prayer and in religious texts. That's right, Hebrew is unique in this way. In the late 1800s and the early 1900s, a man called Eliezer ben Yehuda worked hard to revive Hebrew as a spoken language. By learning Hebrew, you can be a part of this unique movement of history. Today, Israel is a leader in the area of high-tech industry. And this means there are many jobs and business opportunities in tech in Israel. Although most Israelis speak English, learning Hebrew will help you communicate in an effective way with Israelis. There are many times knowing the language and culture of Israel will give you an advantage when making a business deal or finding work in Israel. Another reason to learn Hebrew is to better understand politics in the region. There is quite a lot going on in the Middle East right now. Learning Hebrew will help you understand Israeli politics and perspective. You'll be able to read Israeli newspapers and watch Israeli news and learn about this intense region in a new way. There are so many reasons to learn Hebrew. Okay then. We've talked about why you should start learning a language and why you should start learning Hebrew, but how should they get started, Edith? Well, it's as simple as learning your first word in Hebrew and building up from there. The good news is that you already know some Hebrew. Hallelujah. Chutzpah. Chumus. These are words that have made their way into English, but the reverse is also true. Many English words have also made their way into Hebrew. In fact, for many modern technologies, like telephone or television, the word most often used in Hebrew is derived from English. Telefon, Televisia, Autobus. So there are many words you already know in Hebrew. Let's teach you something that you might not know, but is very useful. Toda. It means thank you in Hebrew. That's a useful phrase. Can you tell us more about these characters, though? Sure. In Hebrew, you use the Hebrew alphabet. Once you learn the letters and their sounds, it's actually pretty easy to read. Most letters in Hebrew represent a consonant sound, 
but we also use a system of dots to represent vowels. These vowel dots are called nikud. When you're learning to read, you read texts with the vowel dots. As you get better, you read the letters without the dots. Isn't that a little confusing? No, it's actually easier than it looks. Hebrew is a systematic language, and the vowel sounds will be clear from the structure of the word. This is toda with the vowel dots, toda. And this is toda without the vowel dots, toda. You'll learn the Hebrew writing system eventually, but for now, let's put up some romanization to help you get started. The romanization will make it easier for you to learn Hebrew until you learn to read the letters yourself. That certainly makes things much easier to learn. Well, okay then. Now listen and repeat after eat it. Toda. Now you try. Toda. Your turn again. Toda. Well done. Now you know how to say thank you in Hebrew. We've covered a lot of things already, so why don't we wrap up the first lesson and recap what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that studying another language has many benefits, such as providing new job and business opportunities. The Hebrew language has a unique history, and learning Hebrew will open up a new aspect of history for you. And to say thank you in Hebrew, it's... Toda. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Hebrew pronunciation. Pronunciation refers to the manner in which a word is spoken. So don't focus on reading what's on screen. Instead, focus on listening and repeating. In Hebrew, there are only 22 letters of the alphabet, and technically they're all consonants. There are also vowel sounds which are shown by the dot system called nikud. Many of the sounds are similar to English, like b, v, sh, s, and t. B, v, sh, s, t. But there are a few sounds you may not recognize at first. Like ch, e, s. In Hebrew, words are stressed differently than in English. Stress is usually on the last syllable of the word. Avoda. But in some cases, the stress is on the second to last syllable of the word. Letters produce consonant sounds. These sounds are combined with vowel sounds indicated by the nikud. Vowel sounds you find in Hebrew are all found in English as well. A, E, I, O, U. There are different notations for these vowels, but in most cases, the basic vowel sound stays the same. The pattern of the word and the placement of the vowel determines which vowel symbol will be used. For example, the word for language, lashon, and the word for crisis, mushber, both have a vowels after the first letter. But because of the way the word is constructed, the vowels are notated differently. Some letters have two sounds, depending on if there's a stress on the consonant or not. Bet is both b and v. Kaf is both k and ch. Pei is both p and f. There is also one other letter that changes sound according to the dot above it. That's shin and sin. It makes the sh sound when the dot is on the right, and the s sound when the dot is on the left. The most daunting group of letters are the guttural letters. A, H, 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 A, R. Three of these letters are pronounced deep in the throat. These may feel unusual at first, but are fun to say once you get the hang of them. Ein, Chet, Reish. Most of the sounds in Hebrew are already sounds you use in English. That means that if you were to simply imitate a Hebrew speaker, your pronunciation would be correct a lot of the time. For example, listen and repeat after eat it. Rakevet. Rakevet. Chances are your pronunciation was pretty spot on. The K, V, and T sounds are practically identical to English. It's only the R that's a little different. Focus on this first letter. It's often written as an R, but don't be fooled. This letter is pronounced differently than an English R. It's pronounced at the back of the throat, instead of forward in the mouth. Listen to Edith say this letter. R. 
R. It's actually closer to the German or French R, but without the roll. Nearly all sounds in Hebrew are identical to English, like the K, V, and T sounds in this example. Since you already know how to pronounce most of these sounds, we only need to pay attention to the handful of sounds that are completely new to you. They're the ones we need to look out for. In the previous lesson, we taught you how to say thank you in Hebrew. Do you remember what it was? It's... Toda. Well done! Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Hebrew has 22 letters, but even more sounds. The extra sounds come from the vowels and the consonants that can represent two sounds instead of one. Many of the sounds in Hebrew are identical to the sounds in English. And there are only a handful of new sounds that you need to learn. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Hebrew grammar. Word order refers to the order in which words are structured to form a sentence in a given language. The first thing you must remember when reading Hebrew is that it's read from right to left. Consider the English sentence, he ate an apple. But first, let's remove the article an here for simplicity. So we're just left with, he ate apple. The basic word order for English is subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. If we break down the English sentence, he ate apple, we can see that the subject he is presented first, followed by the verb ate. And then finally, the object apple is positioned last. This is the basic word order for sentences in English. Now let's compare that same sentence, he ate an apple, in Hebrew. Hu achal tapuach. In Hebrew, you only need an article for definite articles. Here we have only an indefinite article, so we don't need a word like a or an. If we break down the Hebrew sentence, we get the subject, hu, meaning he. Then comes the verb, achal, meaning ate. And finally, we have the object, tapuach, meaning apple. The word order for Hebrew is the same as English, subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. In Hebrew, for simple sentences with a verb, the order is the same as in English. Word order varies in Hebrew for emphasis and in more complicated sentences. You don't have to worry about that until you learn the basics. For now, use the basic subject-verb-object form when making sentences in Hebrew. Okay, let's move on to the next section. In Hebrew, you want to begin with the subject of your sentence. Let's start with the pronoun I. In Hebrew, that's ani. Next, you need your verb. In the present tense, there are four forms for verbs according to masculine, feminine, masculine plural, and feminine plural. When your subject is I, the verb is conjugated either in masculine or feminine, depending on who is talking. Using the verb to love, le'ehov, as an example, the masculine is ohev, and the feminine is ohevet. So, what do we have so far? I'm a woman, so I would use the feminine, ani ohevet. The last thing we need is an object, something you love. How about dogs? Klavim. Ani ohevet klavim. I love dogs. If I were a man, I would say, ani ohev klavim. So it's as simple as that, and very similar to English. Now it's your turn. See if you can use these words to make the sentence, the boy loves dogs. Ohev klavim hayeled. Did you succeed? First you need the subject, the boy. In the present tense in Hebrew, the verb is determined by the number and gender of the subject. Here, we have one boy. Hayeled. Then you need to add the verb, the boy loves. This verb will be conjugated in masculine singular for the boy. That's ohev. Hayeled ohev. Finally, you add the object. Altogether, the boy loves dogs. Hayeled ohev klavim. But what if you're not a dog lover, and you want to express that in Hebrew? Forming the negative in Hebrew is very easy. You just need to know one word. Lo. To make the sentence negative, you add this word before the verb. Ani lo ohevet klavim. Great! Now you know how to make a sentence in Hebrew, and you know how to say it in the negative. 
Next, we're going to teach you one more thing, how to ask a question in Hebrew. This is really difficult. Are you ready for this? You don't have to change a word in the sentence. To ask a question in Hebrew, you change how you say the words in the sentence. Let's hear, the boy loves dogs, as a question. Let's hear the difference between the normal sentence and the question. The normal sentence is, The question is, The formal way to ask this as a question is to add a word to the beginning of the sentence. But this way is not used very often in speech. You say ha'im before the rest of the sentence. Ha'im ha'yeled ohev kalavim? If you want to ask who loves dogs, you replace the subject with the word for who. That word is mi. Mi ohev kalavim? Well done. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Hebrew sentences are formed using a subject, verb, object, or SVO word order, just like in English. Secondly, you learned how to make a sentence negative by adding one word before the verb. Lastly, you learned that asking questions in Hebrew is easy because you only have to change the way you say the sentence to ask a question. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Hebrew writing. In Hebrew, we use two different scripts one for print and one for handwriting. Most people learn the printed script first and even learn to write their letters this way. These are called otiot dfus. Printed letters are rarely used for handwriting other than in elementary school, so most people learn script letters very quickly after learning the printed letters. Script letters are called otiot ktav. One thing you don't have to worry about in Hebrew is capital letters. There's only one case for letters in Hebrew. Here's some general information about Hebrew letters. Hebrew is read right to left, the opposite of English. There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, and they are all consonants. You may be thinking, but what about vowels, right? These dots are placed underneath or next to the letter in order to let you know what vowel comes after the consonant. Here is the word for dog, kelev, without nikud. And here it is with nikud. Let's do the same with the word for boy, yeled. Without nikud, it's... And with nikud, it looks like this. Those are both with e vowels. Let's look at one with some other vowels. How about the word for mountains, harim? Here it is with nikud. This has both an a vowel and an e vowel. Although this is very useful when you're learning Hebrew, don't get used to it. Most things in Hebrew are written without the vowel dots. The reason we usually don't use nikud when writing Hebrew is that we don't really need it. That's right. Hebrew is very systematic and structured. It's very methodical and logical. Words are created according to patterns, and this helps you figure out what vowels are used in the words. You already know the word for dog, which is kelev. Next time you see this word, you don't need to see the vowels because you know they are there. You'll have to rely on what you've learned. There are some letters in Hebrew that will indicate what vowels are present. These letters are technically consonants, but can behave like vowels. Aleph, Hey, Vav, Yud, Ein. For example, the letter Hey often ends a word with an A or an E sound, like in the words Laila for night and bonnet, the masculine singular form for build. There are five letters that change form when they're at the end of a word, but they're still the same letter. Chaf, chaf sofit. Mem, mem sofit. Nun, nun sofit. Pe, pe sofit. Tzadi, tzadi sofit. Here's an example of how this works. The letter mem looks like this in the beginning or middle of the word, mem, like in the word for stage, bama. When it comes in the end, it looks like this, mem, like in the word for the sea, yam. Three letters can have two different sounds depending on whether they are in a stressed position or not. Bet is both b and v. In the word bama, or stage, it makes a b sound. And in the word for dog, 
or kelev, it makes a v sound. Chaf is both k and ch. For this example, we can use the word for dog again. In kelev, this letter makes a k sound. And in the word for correct, which is nchon, it makes a ch sound. This letter also has a special end form that looks like this. When it comes at the end of the word, like chiyuch, the word for smile, it's always pronounced ch. Pei is both p and f. In the word papa, or butterfly, this letter is pronounced with a p sound. In the word for book, or sefer, it's pronounced with a f sound. There are also six pairs of letters that at one point in history had different sounds, but today sound very similar. Aleph and Ein, Bet and Vav, Chet and Chaf, Tet and Taf, Kaf and Kuf, Samech and Sin. For example, the words telephone, meaning telephone, and Tshuva, meaning answer, begin with two different letters of the alphabet, but you would never know that unless you saw them written. One interesting aspect of the Hebrew alphabet is the letters also represent numbers. Aleph represents the number one, Bet represents the number two, and so on. When you get to the number ten, or Yud, we add the first nine letters to it to represent eleven through nineteen. The letters can be combined to create numbers into the hundreds and thousands. You can find the first ten letters used as numbers in many day-to-day -day contexts. For instance, Sunday is often referred to as Yom Aleph, or Day One. The first semester in university is called Semester Aleph. Okay, let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that there are two different scripts used to write Hebrew, printed script and written script. Hebrew is written and read from right to left. All 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet are consonants. There are also vowels in Hebrew, and these are written with a dot system. Some letters in Hebrew cover two sounds, and other sounds are covered by two letters. And lastly, the Hebrew alphabet can also be used to represent numbers. In this lesson, we'll focus on teaching you the most useful Hebrew words and phrases for absolute beginners. Make sure you're repeating the words out loud after I say the examples. Are you ready? Let's get started. The best phrase to learn when studying a new language is one that expresses gratitude and appreciation. If you had to learn only a single phrase, this would be it. We taught you this phrase in the first lesson of this series. Do you remember what it was? Toda. It means thank you. Keep repeating after eat it until you get it. Toda. Your turn. Toda. Toda. But what if you want to express even greater thanks, like in English, when you say, thank you very much? Then you would add a rabba after the toda. Altogether, it's toda rabba. The next phrase we'll teach you is perhaps the second most useful phrase of all. It's to apologize or to excuse yourself. Slicha. It means, excuse me, or I'm sorry. Slicha. Use this phrase when you want to grab a waiter's attention, or when you're hustling through the busy streets of Tel Aviv. Slicha. Your turn. Slicha. Imagine you're on the street, and you want to stop someone to ask them for directions. What do you say? Slicha. Okay, one last time. Slicha. Now you can say thank you, thank you very much, excuse me, and I'm sorry in Hebrew. Let's move on. Asking where something is is an incredibly important and useful phrase to learn. You're going to need this when asking where the bathroom, the train station, or where the hotel is. To ask where something is, put the Hebrew word for where first, and then add the place you want to find. Eifo. That's Hebrew for where. For example, if you want to ask, where is the bathroom? Eifo shirutim? 
For the train station, it'll be... איפה תחנת הרכבת? And so on. You can ask where something is by starting with... איפה? You might have noticed that this sentence is a few words shorter than the English equivalent. Well, that's because in Hebrew, we don't have a word for is, and the word for the is connected to the noun. So in the sentence, איפה השירותים, you're actually saying, where the bathroom? So that makes it a little simpler. You only need to know the word for where, איפה, and the destination you want to get to. Let's practice these two sentences again. First is, where is the bathroom? איפה השירותים? Your turn. איפה השירותים? The second word of this sentence is the word we use for bathroom in Hebrew. שירותים. Technically, this word means services. Okay, now let's teach you some vocabulary so that you can use it in the sentence. Here are some of the most common words you'll need to learn. בית מלון. Hotel. בית מלון. איפה בית המלון? If you ask someone this question, they'll direct you to the closest hotel. If you'd like to ask where a specific hotel is, like Hilton, for example, simply place the name after hotel. בית מלון. בית מלון הילטון. איפה בית המלון הילטון? Next. מכולת. Convenience store. מכולת. איפה המכולת? Our second example sentence was, where is the train station? איפה תחנת הרכבת? The second word in this sentence means station, and the last word means train. איפה תחנת הרכבת? Your turn. איפה תחנת הרכבת? You can substitute almost anything and simply start with איפה to ask where something is in Hebrew. In this final lesson, you learned how to say thank you, excuse me, I'm sorry, and how to ask where something is in Hebrew. And in this series, we introduce you to the basics of Hebrew pronunciation, grammar, writing, and more. Let's conclude with some parting advice from Edith. Listen to some of her tips on how to learn Hebrew from a native Hebrew speaker's perspective. The best way to learn Hebrew, particularly if you want to improve your communication skills, is to watch and study contemporary Hebrew videos. That's because we often use expressions in daily conversations that aren't necessarily introduced in grammar textbooks. The biggest mistake that I see learners make is stressing too much about making the guttural letter sounds. They may sound funny to you in the beginning, but if you loosen your mouth and just go with the flow, you'll learn that it's actually fun to make these sounds. Watching contemporary videos, such as our videos here at HebrewPod101.com, will ensure that you're learning real, applicable Hebrew in the fastest and most effective way. And you'll be able to perfect the sounds of Hebrew by repeating after us in the videos. You've reached the end of this course, Introduction to Hebrew, but it's only the beginning of your journey to Hebrew fluency. Where do you go from here? Try our Hebrew in 3 Minutes series, where we teach you basic grammar and even more useful phrases. Or check out any of our other video series. We have many different categories for you to choose from. Good luck as you continue learning Hebrew, and I'll see you in another video. Bye! Bye!